Well, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm taking this to the smart way. Gaylord Costa, I am the smart way director. Cap scales are designed to do a very specific job. They're designed to weigh semi-trucks. Do you know the actual height of your rig? My math is broken. Yeah. <laughs> so the smart way is a program that will weigh your vehicle accurately. Now, a lot of people go to the truck scales, to the cat scales. We're gonna talk about why that is absolutely a horrible idea for RVs. But first, in order to do the smart way, there's some homework that you have to do. First off, you need to figure out what kind of tires you're using what your axle ratings are. And to be able to find that, it's normally on the door jam of your driver's side door where you have this worksheet and you just fill out all the information about your tires, your air pressure, your ratings, and, and all that. It's very, very simple to find. It took me about five or 10 minutes to be able to get all the tires on the rig done and on the Jeep. So cat scales are great for weighing trucks because most of the time trucks are gonna be balanced already. They start empty and as they load, they load with weight in mind. With RVs, these things are not built for weight. They're built for convenience and for comfort. So my prediction is on this rig, I think I'm gonna be overweight on my driver's side because on my driver's side, I have all of my batteries. I've got the full wall slide with all the furniture that goes along with it, the dinette, the recliners and all that. I've got my residential fridge. In the back, I've got the generator. I've got the closets in the bedroom. That's all on one side of the rig, which as you can tell, even before you put anything in it, you're already off centered, leaning to one side or the other. But one of the reasons why I bought this floor plan is because of the design, because of the layout, it was functional. So you're already off to a bad start when it comes to weight balance and weight distribution. So let's go see if I'm right. Let's hop into the rig and let's go do the smart way. Well, this is a surprise. There's nobody in line. All right, paperwork done. Let's go way. Oh, look at they've got like a bunch of people out here. So he is checking the height, looking to see what my ma actual max height is, as opposed to what it says in the manual, because you never know, they might be different. I'm at 13.4. So you just put those down, I drive up on top of them, and it gives yeah. you the weight? Yep. Very cool. Ready on the right? Okay, so do this, pull you up. All right, here we go. Get you up here on the scales. Go up. Come on up. Go up. Go up. Yes. Come on. Come on. Okay, slow stop. Yep. 4,500. That was real fast. Come on off, come on up. Stop right there, hold it. Okay, now we're gonna pull you forward. We're gonna put your car where your RV is. So go okay. forward until I tell you to stop. Okay. okay? Okay, sounds great. Okay, we good? Okay, let's come off the scale. All right. Forward slowly. Good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Go ahead and uh, we'll tell you where to go. See you later. Thank you. Okay. So do you know the actual height of your rig? The owner's manual says 13.4. Okay, that's good. good. You want me to go a little bit more? Oh. So uh, you're actually 13.2. Okay. Um, so what we recommend is adding six inches to that just to you know give yourself that extra room. So if you're doing 13.4 already, that's probably stick with it and just add to it, okay? Okay. Um, so you're gonna, uh, we got your sticker here. Give you a little reminder. You can put it on there wherever you read that from. Basically all you're gonna do now is you're gonna take all this information you're gonna pull up to the left of the Super uh, Class A. Okay. Where they're waving at you there. All right. And then you'll be good to go. They're doing your debriefing, good. okay? All right. Thank you, Lupe. Two, two, zero, zero. 
point, okay, which is his dome up there. And we got a height of 12.7 and we record that. Um, all right, uh, looking at the rig, first thing I notice is you're a little bit heavy on this side. Uh, you're about a thousand here and about 400 pounds here. So uh, some of this is going to be caused by the way the rig is designed, where your slides and batteries and things are. But knowing that you're heavy on this side, you can consciously try to keep heavier items in your compartments, your gear, on the other side of the vehicle. So um, heavy on the left side, the driver's side. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm looking the map right. Okay, I so I'm... I have 8,600 pounds on the front axle. You have an axle rating of 10,000 pounds. That puts you in very good shape there. Uh, on the rear, I have, uh, well, let's see, I have... Uh, 17, 18, about 18, one, two, about 18, two on the rear. You have a 21K, uh, so you're in real good shape there. Let me double check that. 9A is 17, 18, two. So 18, 200. So we take that 86, and we add that 86 in there. You are at, now at uh, about, my math is broken. <laughs> Let's just do this. About 26, 800. You're at 31 is your gross vehicle, so you're well under all okay. of your ratings. You have, uh, essentially, you have about 3,000 to 4,000 pounds of available capacity. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your fuel and water status? Uh, I'm full on fuel, or I'm sorry, full on water. About half on fuel? Uh, let's see. I want to say about half. I think I've got 50 gallons or so. Let me check. Okay. Well, you're, you're in a position where there's really, you have no limitations on, on cargo load uh, within any reasonable uh, extent. You have a lot of available capacity. I shouldn't know that because then I'll just get more stuff. Well, you know, <laughs> if you can carry it, might as well have it, right? Uh, but you're good. You're good on weight. Uh, we stick to your RV. Height is 13.2 on our stick. Mm -hmm. I would recommend yeah, considering 13.6 or below yeah. a no-go. Yeah, I or have even 14. Okay. You know? I have 13.4 as in the manual. Okay. So. Um, yeah, in that ballpark somewhere, the uh, stick is a mechanical device. It's not always super accurate. Mm -hmm. um, you, your toad back here is in the. Uh, it's in the. 4,500 to uh, 4,800 pound yeah. range. Yeah. Uh, probably no issue. This probably has a 10,000 pound towing capacity. Uh, so you're good there. Okay. Um, and it just for information's sake. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about tire pressures. You're running um, these 275 ADR 22.5s. Uh, they are a fairly heavy duty tire and you're not putting a lot of weight on them. So your tire pressures at 110, if that's what you normally run, you're probably substantially overinflated. Really? So I'm going to pull up that tire on my Michelin chart here. This is the X2L2. I don't have that exact tire, but I'm going to give you an approximation based on the uh, X2A3. Uh, same basic tire, same size. Um, you are literally off the bottom of the chart up front. The lowest on the chart is 4915, and you're at 4500 is your heavy corner. That's 75 PSI. Wow. So what that's saying is that 75 PSI is the minimum necessary pressure to carry the load your tire has on it. You can go above that, don't go below it. So at this point, we're gonna see the same kind of thing back here on the rear. Uh, on the rear tire, at 95.50 is your uh, highest point. 80 PSI is the minimum pressure needed to carry this load. Okay, so I'm gonna put 80 PSI. In. So given this information, you can see you're substantially over those, those values, which is going to not only make the ride a lot stiffer and harder, it's also going to kind of reduce the contact patch of the tire on the road because when the tire is overinflated, it crowns, it gets more rounded on the tread contact area. So it's a good idea to come down, I would come down at a minimum to 90 PSI across the board. Okay. All right. Take it down to 90 PSI, see if the ride improves, see if, you, if you're comfortable with the way it feels going down the road. And if you are, and if you do get an improvement, you can even come down further to say 80 or 85 PSI, and you're still well above this minimum. But 90 PSI is probably gonna be close to the sweet spot. Okay. And do them all to 90, that way you're not trying to remember different pressures or right. different, different axles. Okay? Question about that 90 PSI. Sure. And that's when I'm, I'm significantly underweight. If I get heavier, let's, you know, what is the maximum, if I were at my capacity of 31,000 on the GVWR, 
um, then you would probably be closer to 105, 110. Okay, that okay. Yeah. So I'm so because I got that 110 from the sticker on the door, so they're probably assuming full exactly. capacity. Okay. Exactly. But and this is this is lawyer talk. This is to protect them from liability. <laughs> they didn't tell you too low a pressure, and you have a blowout and mm -hmm. soon. Uh, this is way more than you need. So okay. I literally would. I personally, I would probably go to 80 or 85. Okay. Just just to see. But if you want to take it a little at a time, go down to 95. Yeah, I'll probably drop then it to, go down to 85. Yeah, I might drop it down to 90 for this yeah. next ride and yeah, then see. Yeah, see how it does. Yeah. All right. So we've covered everything. You're in good shape. You got no weight issues. This back here is an exercise for the student. You can take these numbers, plug them in here, use a calculator because I do estimates at the scale. And this will take you step by step through the debrief I just did for you, cool. as far as what you're comparing, adding, and doing all that. We talked about tire pressure already. If you want the load inflation charts, there's a link on the SmartWay page, and an email for any questions that you might have as you go down the road. Okay. And there is that. All right. And then this okay. is a little brochure. Talks about why we do this. Talks about exceeding ratings, which you don't. But it does have a place to note down how you were configured when you weighed this time. And if you do add a substantial cargo or carry new things or tow new things down the road, you may want to get reweighed. Right now, there's no reason for it to do anything unless you substantially increase your load. But this gives you a place uh, to note down how you were configured today, and it gives you a place to know where you started from. Okay. Okay. Great. And that is it, man. So this is very like great information because it tells you the left to right front to back and everything the cat scales that i see other rvers do on youtube and stuff that just weighs front or is that just is that left to right is that front to back is that um total vehicle weight and and how is this different how is this better cat scales are designed to do a very specific job they're designed to weigh semi trucks and semi trucks almost never have any side to side asymmetry weight issues RVs, because of the way they're built, they tend to be very much off, either heavy on one side or heavy on the other. So a cat scale doesn't care about side-to-side -side load distribution because semis are generally 100% flat level, no, very little variance. So they weigh axle only. And they'll have a platform for the steer axle, a platform for the drive axle, and a platform for the trailer axles. So that you only get three weights. Uh, smart way identifies things like this you know, basically thousand pound difference in side to side weight mm -hmm. distribution. Now, if you think about on a lighter RV, one an RV that has less capacity than this one, this kind of weight distribution issue can push you over a tire rating on the heavy side. Uh, a, an axle scale will not show that because this axle is under its axle rating, but with this heavy corner, you could be over a tire rating and not right. know it. We see that pretty regularly on lighter coaches. Mm -hmm. And you know, your your coach is built on a very heavy duty chassis. A lot of the class A RVs are not. Mm -hmm. They're built on old P30 chassis, they're built on delivery truck chassis. So this becomes a great issue. And we have actually seen, I've personally seen an RV with 3,800 pounds of differential on the rear axle, which pushed them completely over the tire rating on the side that was heavy. Wow. And uh, cat scale will never tell you that. Mm -hmm. You'll never know it. Yeah. So okay. that's the reason for the, the corner weights. Yeah. And also corner weights allows us to choose a proper tire pressure. If we had taken your axle rating or your axle weight to determine a tire pressure, we would have been under what we needed mm -hmm. because we wouldn't have known one was so much higher than the other. Best 55 bucks ever spent. Stuart, excellent. <laughs> it's been great. Yeah, Mark, man. thank you. Thank I you appreciate for all it. your help. And oh, of course. All. Okay, so as you can see, I was doing everything by the book. The tags on the driver's side on the little old sticker uh, recommended a tire pressure of 110, but as you can tell, that's for like a fully loaded weight thing, and I was way underweight, at least on, well, total, I was way underweight. I had the tires way too high, which could have also been an issue. So I'm dropping my PSI down to 100, and then maybe down to 95, and I'm just gonna kind of lower it down, see kind of where my sweet spot is. Hopefully we'll get a smoother ride, better miles per gallon and fuel economy, and whatever else, you know, we'll see what happens. The other thing is to know that it's important now, I know I'm, I'm, over, I'm overweight on the left side, but that doesn't put me overweight total. But it's just one of those things to kind of keep in mind that, you know, I'm a thousand pounds heavy on the driver's side, which 
in this rig is not necessarily a big deal because I'm still 4,000 pounds underweight total for the entire vehicle, for the entire ratings. But if you're in a smaller rig, even a class A uh, that's built on a different chassis or in a smaller C, not a super C like this, those differences can make a big deal in how your RV performs. So going onto a cat skill, you'll never know any of that. You might know if your total vehicle is overweight or underweight. You might know if your front versus the back axles are overweight or underweight, but you're never going to know about your sides. And that's important when you're taking corners and maneuvering through rocky roads and windy roads and stuff to know, are you symmetrically balanced the best way that you can on all four sides? Smartway is the only program that does it this way. That's why it's the best for RVs, period. So if you want to know more about the Smartway program, you can go to the website that's listed down here. Smartway is put on by the Escapees RV Club, and there's uh, multiple permanent locations throughout the United States at some of the Escapees campgrounds, and they do it every year at their annual Escapades event. So be sure to check that out. Catskills are good for trucks, not good for RVs. They're only giving you a small portion of what you really need to know, and it can really give you a false sense of security. Coming up on the next episode of Claim the Vision. All right, I just pulled into the Sweetwater event complex for Escapade 2021. We're having elk tacos. Be sure to hit that like button on this video and subscribe to Claim the Vision so that way you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.